Okay, folks, we're going to the Dick Knight factory so you can see how Dick Knight spoons are made for you. Dick Knight spoons have been around since the 1930s, helping anglers of all ages catch fish, trout, salmon, kokanee, and more. Four salmon world records have been held using Dick Knight spoons and at least one Oregon State shad record. Dick Knight spoons have been used for trout fishing for over 60 years for one reason, they work. Dick Knight spoons are a staple for salmon anglers fishing for coho and pink salmon in the Pacific Northwest. Hey Dick, how's it going? Hey Doug, how are you? I'm good. What are you doing here? I was just getting some inventory put away so we can ship it out. That's awesome. Hey listen, we are here to show the folks how Dick Knight spoons are made. Let's start at the beginning. All right, let's go. All right. So Dick, before we start talking about this machine here, uh, how did Dick Knight Spoons even get started? Well, there was a fisherman in Ballard named Dick Knight that uh, had an idea for a lure that he thought would work. He hand cut it out of brass, peened it with a ball peen hammer, put cat gut on it for rings and a wire hook, and he took it to his barber, Bill Williams, and said, I got this lure that works great. And Bill and him developed it into a product Bill was on my dad's mail route. My dad was a letter carrier. Um, he always put a note in the mailbox that said, I'm going fishing, hold my mail. And my dad said, man, I want your job. You're always going fishing. So a year later, Bill came out and said, do you still want it? And the rest is history for me. That's when dad bought it in 1967. So you've been making Dick Knight spoons for the vast majority of your lifetime. Since I was 11. That's amazing. Now, Dick, what is this machine? This is a about a 1961 one-ton punch press that's uh, performing sheet metal into parts. Different shapes and parts and you're using it to make spoons. Now this machine doesn't look like you went out and bought it 10 years ago. It looks like it's been around for a while. Millions of Dick Knights have come out of this machine. Yeah, it's, uh, it's 50 years old. That's amazing. Now how many Dick Knight spoons can this machine put out? Three a second. Three spoons a second. I don't even want to do that math. That's a little high for me right there. Now, if a lot of people may not know this, but all of your spoons and your dodgers are made of brass. How much brass do you go through every year? We go between one and two tons. It's several Dick Knights. That's amazing. So once the spoons have been punched out, where do they go next? Actually, we take them after they've been punched out. They're rough, so we take them into the tumbler room deburr them in a tumbler, and then polish them if well, look, they're gonna be polished. Let's go take a look at this tumbler room. Sounds great. All right. So Dick, we're in the tumbling room now. How many tumblers are you running? We've got five vibratory tumblers and one rotary tumbler. Okay, so the rotary tumbler does what? That's our deburring tumbler. We use it to get the rough edges off of the lures after they come out of the punch press that we just saw. And then they go into one of the vibrating tumblers. Correct, they're, they're much more efficient at polishing. It takes about three to five days to bring a lure from punch to mirror. So once that lure leaves the punch, it's gonna be in here for a few days before yeah. it moves on. Yeah, three to three to seven. That's unbelievable. Now, once we're done in uh, the tumbling room, they're going... Well, we send them out. If they're gonna be polished lures, like a nickel or a brass or a copper, uh, we send them out to be ring soldered and hooked. If they're gonna be painted, we don't polish them, we just clean them up send them out to the paint room. All right, so I guess we're going to the paint room. Awesome, it's right out there. Okay. We're in the paint room here. How many spoons can you guys paint in a day? Oh, full production day, we could do 7,500 probably. 7,500. Now, how many spoon colors do customers have uh, selection of? We have 85 colors in three sizes. 85 colors in three sizes. I'm sure that you can find a color that's gonna work for you. Now, Dick, what is this rack behind us here? This is our drying box, heat locker. Paint the lures, put it in there, and it dries the paint. So once they get painted, they go into the drying locker. Now, how many coats do the spoons get? Seven to nine on each side. Seven to nine colors on each side. Now, do they need to dry for a particular amount of time in between, or you just do all the coats at once? Well, the the, the, the color coats, we, we do all at once, and then the, the white underneath and the top coat both need 12 to 14 hours to dry. That's 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 amazing. That's a lot of work. In fact, uh, interestingly enough, there's a sign behind you that says, we don't make crap. That's, 
that's correct. If it's if it's wrong, we throw it away. Guys, you're going to get a good product when it comes out of Dick Knight Spoons. So, Dick, what is this station? It almost looks like a medieval torture device. So, uh, I have employees that would agree with you. Um, this is the rack that we, when we've ha dipped our brass lures halfway in lacquer, we hang them on here to dry, and then we send them out to be plated after they've dried, and the part, the brass part takes the, the plate, so we have a 50-50. Really? So this is the birthplace of our 50-50s that we use in the Pacific Northwest, and folks, that is the number one selling lure for Dick Knight Spoons, is that not correct? Oh, absolutely. Now, you send your spoons out for another service. What is that exactly? Yeah, well, we have three hookers that work for us that put the rings on, solder the lures, and hook them. I imagine that's a pretty tedious process. How many lures can they get hooks and rings on in a day? In a week, I take them weekly, um, one to 2,000 per hooker per week. That is amazing. Well, this is certainly a tedious looking job and uh, I think I'd rather fish the spoon than to do this part of the process. The fun is in the fishing, not the making. Absolutely. I've purchased some Dick Knight spoons under some old packaging, but this one goes way back. Way back, that's a, about a 1971 package. 1971. Now, you've got a new packaging machine that you've only had for a few years now. Yeah, about uh, seven or eight years ago, we went to blister packs because people had a problem with getting the skin pack out of the lures and out of the rings and the swivels. and So we made it a lot easier for them and for us, too, in the long run. So Now, how many spoons can you guys get packaged up in a day? Probably three to 5,000. Three to 5,000. That's pretty good. And I'm sure this makes your job a lot easier as far as getting product out to the customers. Absolutely. Excellent. Absolutely. Now, when they're done here with packaging, where do they go next? They go, after they're packaged, we put UPC codes on them and we take them into the inventory room in dozen packs. Excellent. Well, let's take a look at that inventory room. I'm sure the folks would like to see just how you have that organized. Sure. All right. All right. So Dick, this is one of the final destinations for the spoons before we get them and fish them, and we're in the shipping room. And I think a lot of people understand the shipping room is where the product's gonna leave and go to them, but I think for Dick Knight Spoons as a company, a little more goes on here than a lot of customers understand. So let's say I own a tackle store and it's salmon time. I wanna order 3,000 spoons. How long do I have to wait to get those spoons? We'll ship them tomorrow. But how long does it take you to make those spoons? One to three weeks. If I were to sit down and try and make a, a, an order, it'd be three weeks. So the important thing is there is that you're actually making the product in advance so that when people order it, it's on the shelves ready to go out. You know, that's an important thing to think about if these sporting good retailers and distributors want to buy spoons, they need to be ordering in advance because we have great seasons and sometimes stock gets a little skinny, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's, you know, so that's something to think about. You know, Dick Knight Spoons also has a couple new products that one of which I'm very excited about and that is DNA, the Dick Knight Attractant has four different uh, flavors that it comes in, but DNA, it's not a single scent. It's a blend of scents. Correct. What was your thought process in coming up with something with a blend of scents? Well, to tell you the truth, uh, we have Procure make our scent for us because we weren't gonna reinvent the wheel. They know how to do it, they have the factory. Um, they're the top scent manufacturer there is. I went to Phil and said, I need a, a scent that will stay on my spoon. People when they're fishing kokanee and trout, they want to put a, a piece of corn or a piece of, of worm on the hook. And these things are so light, it kills the action. Right. I said, I need a gel that'll go on the spoon and stay on there. And he said, I think I can do that. And so we blended up trout, shad, kokanee, and salmon formulas out of the natural foods that they eat so that they're attracted to it, yet it leaves the action of the lure alone. That's awesome. And sometimes it's just a great idea to get something working so that the anglers can be successful. I know that on DNA, it's one of my favorite scents to use, and I use it religiously on my spoons. Now, you also have Dodgers, and how many color combinations do we have now on Dodgers? We have 15 colors this year. 
15 colors. Guys, Dodgers are great not only for trout and kokanee, but trust me when I say you can use these little babies in the lower rivers trolling for coho in the fall. So keep that in mind. Now, Dick, the last thing I'd like to touch on is Dick Knight Spoons, you guys put a lot of care into building these things. How many times has a person touched this spoon before it leaves the factory? Probably 11. I think there's 11 different processes. That's a, that's a lot of processes. And one thing that I need to point out to you guys, everything that you do is done right here in the USA. You don't outsource internationally whatsoever. We have all of our parts are made in the United States and all of our labor is done here. We will not outsource. That's great. Guys, you may have heard this before, uh, but I'm gonna tell you again, if you're not fishing a Dick Knight, you're just not fishing right. Dick Knight Spoons, uh, they're great products. Dick and his crew put a lot of effort into making a great product for you guys to fish. I hope this information has been helpful here at the Dick Knight Factory. Hope you learned a little something, and I hope that you get into the fish that you wanna catch using Dick Knight Spoons. Thanks for watching.